I'm a staff engineer from VMware China R&D ATC team. Uh, I worked at several projects like IoT, Internet of Things, and our Photon Links OS, and uh, some uh, about uh, serverless and edge computing. Yes, Unicorn also one of my exploration. Before I joined the VMware, I worked uh, at several companies. You may hear some names like Wind River. I was right there. I was responsible for Wind River Linux kernel and the BSP development and the Wind River's own hypervisor and the privatized guest OS. And I also worked at the Intel OTC, Open Source Technology Center. Uh, I was enabling something to uh, some Open Source Technology, QMU, QM, then that's it. Uh, today, I'd like to share with you one exploration of unikernels. So, but first, I have to make this very clear. You know, this is my exploration. So, so far, it's not a roadmap or commitment from VMware. But uh, I myself hope one day I can make this happen because I believe unikernel will play a very important role in the future. So let's go through it to the agenda quickly. So there are three parts. The first part about some background. Uh, next part about uh, exploration ac according to some question. The last part is summary. So uh, first let's look at uh, this background. Just take a look at this picture on the bottom side. I think this can help understanding what's happening from VM to unikernels. VM virtual machine. Um, the uh, provide isolation with that uh, hardware virtualization technology, but it's a high weight. So a couple years ago, container was brought out. Uh, essentially, it's based on some existing Linux kernel feature, namespace, C group, and capability. But it's, it's live, but it's not very secure. One reason I think uh, all containers share one common host OS. So if something is wrong with that host OS, it could have a big impact on other containers. You should remember last year there was a very famous uh, bug, Linux memory subsystem bug, dirty copy on write, that really make container to escape. So instead, some people are trying to trim down that host OS and just deploy one or few container inside this VM. We call it the container as a VM. Uh, like a hyper, like a VM also has that uh, weak, vSphere integrated container. And, uh, but you should notice there's still division between kernel space and user space, so it still costs too much. So what's next? Unikernel. Unikernel, we build application uh, into that one given operating system, but just keep those necessary parts to make your application run. So it's like a library, so label OS. Now it's a whole image. So let's look at uh, how to define Unikernel according to Wicker. Unikernel specialized a single stress machine image constructed by using library operating system. Specialized and uh, single space and uh, label OS. Another thing I want to mention here is that it doesn't require virtualization technology. So that means Unikernel should run on bimetal as well. And I'd like to categorize uh, the uh, Unikernel to a uh, different group. The first one is the general of the Unikernel. It's like a library, but just derived from the general OS, um, like that port compliant program. In this case, we have that ROM ROM and OSV. Another is about that language specific unit kernel. They are library, but specific to one programming language. Um, like Mirage OS, it's written with an OCaml, a very special language. So the two groups. Now let's take a close look at what's that important biggest characteristic of unit kernel. So single address space. That means you can do zero copy. It's easy to configure that huge page and single mode. So without we don't need that highway system call, we can use function call directly. And it's just one process. So know that TLB context switch, for example, for x86, we don't need to reload the CR3. Right. So Compared to that uh, uh, traditional OS and some even compared to internal, Unikernel can provide some benefits like improved security um, because it's still the VM, so they are protected by hypervisor, by hardware virtualization technology. But uh, at the same time, mm, it's specialized, so it has less components. Each component has less code, so the tech surface of Unikernel are reduced, they are smaller. 
And uh, you also get the same uh, smaller that uh, memory size and the footprint, and you can boot that very quickly, and you can optimize them from different layers. Uh, here, so actually, uh, there are a lot of unique kind of approaches so far, like OSV, include OS, and uh, RAM kernel, and uh, Jawbridge. Jawbridge is from uh, uh, Microsoft for Windows. Unique, uh, Unique actually is not Unique kernel itself. It's a tool, open source tool, but it can help you compile your application into some existing Unique kernel, OSV, RAM kernel. Uh, that should be a uh, third supported Unique kernel. I forget that, sorry. But anyway, this can help you deploy a uh, unique kind of image across different uh, that, uh, cloud, even on some IoT devices. So it's very interesting. Uh, also, also, you can find some uh, interesting solutions, something from Docker. I think when we are talking Unicorn, we should thank for Docker. Uh, in last year, Docker acquired the Unicorn system. After that, uh, people really paid attention to Unicorns. And the Docker also released some uh, project, HyperKit and VPNKit. Basically, they can make sure container can run with the Mac OS or the Windows OS. Uh, even this year at the Docker conference, uh, it uh, has that uh, Linux kit. They still uh, have some of uh, these uh, uh, unique kernel projects. And Michelangelo. Michelangelo uh, is uh, trying to provide that very good cloud infrastructure to embrace HPC, high performance uh, computing. Uh, one of the components, guest OS, they use OSV. Uh, NFV, uh, Unicornal is very small, uh, and they have a very good network performance. So some people and some research, they are using that OSV or that Mirage OS or at the Clark OS to construct some flexible NFV solution. Like uh, you can provide some uh, NFV uh, chain services. So you can see uh, some people really use Unicornal to something. So according to some uh, public cloud, you can find a unicorn really smaller, fast, and have a good IO performance. In some cases, you just uh, need gigabytes, several hundred gigabytes. And in some cases, they can boot uh, less than 30 milliseconds and have that extraordinary that network IO throughput. Uh, here also uh, list some links. Uh, I think you can get more information about the unicorn uh, evaluation. So what I'm trying to say is uh, we don't uh, see, uh, see uh, this uh, benefits uh, theoretically because we really can, uh, Unicorn really can do the good thing. So um, based on our investigation, our study, and uh, our discussion, so we think Unicorn really yield a comparable path performance. But why those existing Unicorn have yet gained large popularity? We think they are facing some challenges like compiling enough user cases. We have something, but it's not enough. Compatibility. No, Unicorn is essentially is a new OS, uh, one mode, single address boot. So how to support those existing Unicorn uh, applications? And same time, we lack uh, that production support. I mean, those uh, original tools like monitor and debug log still cannot work with Unicorn directly. And uh, also find so the existing Unikernel just focus on Unikernel itself. Maybe we should take a look at if we can uh, improve Unikernel from hypervisor wheel. And we also want to take a look at if we can define some standard to Unikernel. So basically, we think Linux, Linux could be a good candidate for Unikernel because Linux is, a, is used widely. So it can bring out some valuable user case. And uh, they also can find some uh, acceleration and optimization to Linux. This still can benefit uh, Unikernel. And uh, Linux have that very good community. I think this is a very good, uh, this is the most important fact to make uh, Unikernel succeed. So our next part is about uh, our exploration. Uh, let's begin with some uh, potential but valuable user case. The first of all is that our intensive application. You know, Unicornal uh, aimed to uh, address that uh, I/O performance uh, because it has a simple and efficient I/O flow framework. But uh, just some uh, one subset of intern I/O intensive application that latency sensitive application. Uh, other uh, subsets like bandwidth intensive application, um, I think we need more consideration exploration. But anyway, Unicornal can contribute can contribute I/O large, and especially I mentioned we already had an FV, so. 
Unicron links with that any target acceleration still can benefit the NF solution. Another use case is serverless. I'm not sure um, you have heard of serverless. Uh, uh, Simple speaking, serverless is out cloud computing code execution mode. So that means you don't, uh, you just need to write your code and uh, upload the code to the cloud, but without managing and provisioning your resource, your server, serverless. So instead, the public cloud provider will help you, help you run your application only when needed and uh, scale them automatically. So it's a very promising model. So most of the public cloud support this model with just with a container. But compared to uh, container we all mentioned, uh, Unicorn are still very small and uh, fast uh, and have that security, improved security. And uh, as a VM, it has that mature management and it's easy to support uh, multiple language. But Unicorn is a VM, so it's a high way to carry out one function. And uh, that's uh, some issue we are facing in the production environment, uh, still worse than that serverless. And uh, at the time of creating VM, it costs too much uh, to boost that function, that latency. Um, but in my thing, I think uh, actually that the difference between serverless and the function as a service. So function service should be a subset of serverless. That, that means uh, schedule unit is a function. But if we talk about serverless, we should uh, run group service or some, uh, uh, we can group a service to provide a service. So, uh, but I think in, in, in terms of service, uh, we can um, need that different QoS requirement, quality of a service. So sometimes maybe some function should be grouped because it shares some resource. So if they can work together, that service can be uh, efficient. And uh, maybe sometimes you want to make sure your uh, workload very secure. So just use unikernel. Uh, as a, case, a lot of cases is IoT, that is no doubt. IoT is a very, very big market everyone is talking about. And uh, when we talk about IoT devices, they are resource constrained. But the unit kernel is smaller, so it's very suitable for IoT devices. And uh, you know that uh, uh, security issue is at a very biggest concern in the IoT case. So unit kernel uh, can be addressed this kind of IoT devices. But most time, uh, Unicorn means we need virtualized technology support. And, and uh, those existing Unicorn don't never designed to uh, act too specific to IoT. I mean, they don't consider policy, they don't consider real-time requirement, they don't support uh, multiple texture. But the Unicorn Nicks can do this. Uh, you know, uh, uh, also, you know, I'm working on IoT projects, so we did some investigation and some uh, uh, evaluation, we think there will be a trend that virtualization will thrive at each side. So, um, so Unicorn links, uh, so, and uh, we know uh, when we talk about uh, IoT devices, right uh, links already and always play a very important role. So, it's according to one uh, report, two thirds of IoT gateway are deployed with that uh, links. So, it's really worth to. Uh, exploring how to put the Unicorn links into IoT. And even without uh, virtual technology support, it's easy to run Unicorn links on these kind of devices. So uh, there are some cases. These cases uh, should be that emerging uh, cases like blockchain and uh, machine learning. Mostly they need that uh, um, CPU sub, uh, GPU support and that performance uh, security issue. So uh, Unicorn can benefit uh, this, uh, these two cases from different perspectives. Um, uh, but I have to admit, um, I need to take more time to figure out how to put the Unicorn links into this case. Just potentially, I think Unicorn links can benefit these two cases. So, uh, how, what could we do? So, our target, our goal is to explore what's the best platform for running a uh, Unicorn case. So basically, we need to continue research the existing unit kernels and uh, build our new unit kernel, I mean, convert links to unit kernel and uh, explore further optimization. I'll talk about this in the later. Yes, yeah, so we definitely face some challenges. Uh, so uh, how to convert links to a unit kernel? There's a big gap between links to that unit kernel. Links is that general or as it's uh, uh, support the multiple process and the two modes, 
and uh, it's uh, sort of a tuple, uh, tightly coupled components, and how to on further improve performance is still a uh, problem we should concern. Another challenge is about the reduced time creating VM. So far, we trying to use a snapshot, especially for um, VM. We have that instant clone. We also call that uh, VM fork. So that means readily creating VM from uh, scratch. Uh, this feature can uh, create a fork of one existing VM to create one or more child VM. These VM just share uh, same memory and same storage, but if something is changed, this change then not made into that uh, same memory or storage. Instead, we require that change into that one Delta file, like copy on write. Uh, parallelization, uh, we have that VMCI, we, uh, virtual machine communication uh, interface. So we want to expand that to construct a more parallel at API. New scheduler, because um, now uh, some, in some cases that uh, Unikernel is running as a short level. Talk about um, serverless. Sometimes should just run private services uh, at the next time we need to uh, shut it down immediately. And how to manage this uh, Unikernel is another question. So how could we possibly achieve these uh, solutions? I'd like to talk about from different perspective. Uh, first one is from uh, the hypervisor. Support, first one is support major existing Unikernel. On the one hand, we uh, integrate uh, what I.O. into our EXI, our hypervisor, to support the uh, Unikernel. On the other hand, we uh, want to um, port our parallel driver, like VMGNET3 and PVSCSI and VM2 into those existing Unikernel. So far, we have uh, two uh, Unikernel uh, that can support EXI. Uh, one is OSV, another one is that include OS. Define the API, so um, based on the, it's still based on the hub call. I hope it can help me um, do something like config and control guest OS and set up inter VM communication and allocate uh, destroy memory. In some cases, I hope that um, can provide a very good performance. So we need it. New scheduler, um, so for the short lived VM and some time for the group the unikernel instance. So from Linux perspective, so how to convert Linux to a uh, unikernel? Normal Linux is running with a two mode, kernel mode and a user mode. Now unikernel Linux is running with a one mode. Here we just focus on x86 at uh, 64. So we need to modify some macros like US, uh, and uh, USCS, GS, and that's a GDP entry table to make sure on both the current stuff and the US stuff is uh, running with that one mode, run zero. And we also need to, uh, uh, so next thing is about uh, IST, interrupt stack table. Why mention this? So think about this case. So in, in terms of Unicorn links, uh, the, uh, mm, when your uh, user application is running with the user stack, but sometimes we need to expand the user stack, or for some reason, user stack is not valid. Now, uh, how do I cannot switch that uh, stack between kernel stack and to user stack? So user, we still use that user stack. It will trigger that uh, page fault. But at a certain moment, CPU cannot see that uh, register information like SS, ISP, and that uh, E flag. So it will trigger that another fault, that um, double fault. But again, that user stack is still not valid. So how do I have to shut down CPU? So how can we address this problem? Fortunately, we have that uh, IST interrupt stack uh, table feature. So this can um, switch to new stack automatically. And that can be up uh, seven entries um, per CPU. And that uh, IST uh, code is uh, indexed uh, into that TSS task state, uh, task state segmentation. So the IST entry in that uh, TSS will point to the new stack. Uh, so we need to make this uh, mechanism work for um, interrupt and exception. Another about the VDSO. Now we are running with one mode, so we don't need some syscall. So we need to modify a VDSO to make sure just jump to that function call. And then sometimes we have to uh, switch stack. So because some application 
um, they are probably compiled statically, they will call the state code directly. So we have to um, switch stack. But this is a few case. I think um, it's not our uh, folks. Single address space, um, I think is easy to understand. It's just uh, no fork, no EXDC. And after, uh, we need to continue to uh, optimize links. Um, typically, uh, we can use that key config to disable those unnecessary components to get that smaller size, sm a smaller footprint, and do zero copy. Now we are running with one mode or one space, so we don't need to check between kernel space and user space. We don't need to copy between kernel space and user space. So this kind of uh, stuff, like copy from to user, should be gone. A schedule, um, uh, you know, normal links uh, has a different uh, schedule besides that uh, idle and uh, stop. We have that uh, CFS and RT and deadline. Um, but in most cases, Unicorn links is running with one process. So we don't need to, uh, those, these schedule coexist. Uh, exist. So I think uh, we need to decouple this schedule to make sure we can um, customize this schedule according to different application re requirement in the, the, during the compile time. Um, here, that's another question to me. Is, uh, maybe we should consider if we need to set up a new scheduler just for that one process model. And this is my question to me, and so far I have no that clear answer. So TCP IP stack, I mean, you, uh, Linux is, has that very good network TCP IP stack, but it's complicated. He have to address a different scenario. Now, uh, Unikernel is specialized and customized, so we'd like to enter some live TCP stack just for some user cases. So now we can define this, uh, customize this uh, TCP IP stack for the different uh, user cases. Like uh, we can integrate LWIP and the fast socket, say start. Uh, oh not, so next is about that uh, um, variant. You know, links, uh, um, be, except that uh, many links, uh, we also have different links variants, like uh, RT links, um, that's based on preempt RT links. And we have that uh, some secured links variant, like SE links and GR security links and uh, app armor. I have uh, armor. So that means uh, Unicorn links uh, still can provide a different uh, Unicorn links profile to address different user cases. So it's uh, attractive, right? I don't think uh, those uh, existing Unicorn can, do, can compete when we talk about Unicorn links. So actually, it's one, of the reason, one important reason I'd like to consider convert, how to convert links to uh, Unicorn links. Uh, so compatibility, mm, we need to consider how to support those existing uh, applications. It depends on different code scenarios. So if you have that source code, I think it's easy. We just uh, pre-compile some uh, standard library like glibc. Right there, we replace that system call with a function call. Uh, you just need to recompile your application with the new glibc. But if you have just binary, if it, um, your binary is compiled with a flag, a compiler flag, a share or pick, and you need to reset that LD preload or LD dot, uh, LD dot, LD dot SO dot preload to make sure um, we can use our that's pre-compiled JLBC uh, um, plus VDSO to replace a system call with our function call. Um, in other case, um, we probably can use the binary translation, but uh, according to some um, uh, report I'm found, so it's not easy to um, to find that uh, to define that ex exactly what system call is in the binary. So um, here we don't uh, want to cover this case, and uh, this case it should be of that's uh, not the majority case. So multi process. Um, so my recommendation: so if your application uh, is running with a multiple process model, uh, the first thing is. Uh, to try to redesign your application with multiple threads to get a larger benefit from a unique kernel. But if it cannot, 
um, there are two ways. The first one is uh, straightforward. And one fork um, can trigger that one unicorn links instance. But that means the IPC will become an interval communication. Another way is that the PCID. PCID is a x86 feature, um, a process context identifier. It, you can treat it as that uh, process identifier, and uh, this can reduce uh, the cost when you do that context switch, because TC, uh, TLB can um, keep that, uh, keep that uh, some uh, TLB entry during the translation. But it has limited bits. I think it's enough to cover a lot of cases, especially it can support some links or debugger tool or the modeling tool to make this still come in the uh, case of unicorn links. So next is about debugging the monitor log. So debug log info and just redirect it to that serial part. And uh, support that links or utility. Um, we still can use this utility based on the piece ID and plus that uh, the bottom driver but drive is um, for this case, key dump. You know, key dump is a very good tool to debug a kind of panic. But that means you have to reserve memory to load that uh, sort of dump uh, capture kernel. It's not good in the production environment because it costs that real memory. So instead, we just reserve that virtual address range. But we don't know that the capture kernel, we don't allocate the memory. But one day, if we want to debug something with that key dump, we just use the bottom driver allocate some physical memory and map them to that uh, preserved uh, virtual address range and load that uh, dump capture kernel, enable it. It's not difficult. Um, monitor. Um, here I integrated a mini uh, HTTP thread like OSBD. Just connect this stuff with uh, Linux existing utility like top and to help us connect some uh, static information. Log unikernel, a uh, unikernel is uh, uh, log uh, unikernel. Uh, links already support that remote syslog. And with this uh, we have a very really log inside. Just connect them to make uh, sure we can provide the virtualized uh, log uh, information. Uh, next part about some uh, enhancements. Mm. Like um, we can integrate some smaller bootload into uh, these links to escape the bells. And you can find some projects uh, working on this kind of thing. And uh, replace ACPI partially with the DTB device tree, Bob. And uh, also we can use that one one bus device initialization because the Unicorn Linux is uh, customized, specialized, so we don't need to scan all bus and score all devices. Just tell Unicorn Linux uh, what's that. Some of uh, so next uh, about some uh, about some uh, hardware translation technologies like uh, VM Funk. So I mentioned uh, we need that just inter VM communication. So this can help set up this fast uh, and that uh, secure the communication between VM based on the pre compiled APD table. This can reduce that VM exit. Uh, another some feature like uh, VPID and the perimeter. I'm in term, um, it's just um, enhance, uh, improve the performance of a uh, unique kernel from different perspective by means that reduce that VM exit. Um, besides the uh, unicorn links itself, we need a tool, efficient tool, to help you compile application into unicorn links. So at this point, we just align the Docker file. And uh, for AZV distribution, I'd like to divide that unicorn image to a uh, different parts, like the configuration and the unicorn image, and that user application and the dependency. Orchestration, um, I think unicorn uh, unique uh, has already done very well, so I just need to integrate our unicorn links into a uh, unicorn. Um, the last is about as a Integrate the source code as a tool because um, no matter we are talking about the cloud, no matter we talk about the IoT device, security is really important. So I'm trying to uh, I'd like to do um, enhance security from different uh, from the code level. So next part is our management. Uh, there's one term: U app, unicorn application. And um, on this bigger picture, uh, you can find we have a unicorn manager. 
unit kernel manager is uh, uh, that controller of our solution here. It can um, manage that life cycle of your apps. It also expose, exposes function to that uh, unit kernel client and uh, by that uh, REST API, and then unit kernel client can interact with that uh, your application. On the right side, you can also provide that uh, your app image and register system. It's very similar to that uh, uh, doc. So it's easy to understand what we are trying to do. Another part about uh, VDFS. VDFS is an abbreviation on the virtual distributed file system. It's a high converted file system. Um, it can um, have some benefits. They will configure and share the file system cache and no need to manage disk image. That means the disk less. Actually, it's based on the 9P, uh, what IO or 9P file system. So this can um, help us boost uh, uh, Unicorn and links from two spec to uh, small, small uh, footprint, small size, and uh, to put a time. Okay, so um, last, um, I think, um, as I mentioned, uh, Unicorn is very small and fast and have a good performance. We also have some uh, solutions and some existing Unicorn, but they are facing some challenges. and. Uh, Unicorn links um, can eliminate its, its challenge and uh, can embrace more potential and valuable user case. So I think, uh, mm, so uh, all this is my personal exploration, but I think it's uh, worth to continue my exploration. So let's do it, just my personal point. So oh, here's some references for this presentation. It also brings us to the end of the presentation. Uh, I think um, we done this presentation. If you have any question, just So uh, actually, we are at the early stages. So I just can put a uh, unicorn links with the uh, hello world on QM, on EXI, something like that. So uh, it's not easy to decouple that um, some links and stuff. It's, it's challenging. So I'd like to connect some feedback So how to make this uh, happen. Utilings, right? Use, I don't know. Uh, that's uh, um, MMU less links, right? I know that. I know that. I'd like to uh, use that some concept to support a multiple process in one single space. Yeah, I know that. Some of the problem that you mentioned there, Linux and Linux Dow. But MMU uh, Linux doesn't support x86. Uh, x86, right, right. Yeah. So it's a big challenge. Any question? If no question, I think we can finish. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you all your time on it.